noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Next verse. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. Next verse. If I gave everything I have to the poor and sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Stay right there. Paul is trying to make a point. He's saying, I don't care if you heal six people a week. I don't care if you speak in tongues. I don't care if you can get a prophetic word. I don't care if you serve at, uh, at, on, on a Sunday morning and you serve on the student leadership team and that you come up front and worship and you cry and you snot and you jump. I don't care if you can sing your butt off. I don't care. I don't care if you don't love people. God looks at it and he's like, nah. God looks at all of our good deeds and if we don't love people, he's like, nah. It's nothing. So my question to you would be, do you love people? And as you begin to answer that, it is important to understand that God doesn't let us define what love is. He defines love for us so that we can look at it and go, okay, God, this is what you consider loving. Am I this? And you can measure up to what God says. Let's look at what he says through Paul. Uh, verse 4, love is patient and kind. Let's sit right there. Love is patient. Patient isn't just waiting around, right? Love just waits. That's not what that means. Love makes room for other people's flaws. You have the understanding. I'm not perfect. They're not perfect. I make mistakes. They make mistakes. I can be annoying they can be annoying. I make room for other people's flaws so that when they mess up, I'm not like, man, I don't even like that. But they came over there, they were having a bad day. They came and said this to me, and then you go tell somebody else. And it's like, look, they were having a rough day. They were having a rough year. They were struggling in this. They were hangry. Like, I don't know what somebody was going through, but patience makes room for people's flaws. It says that love is kind. Kind is more than just being nice. Right? Here's what I consider nice. Somebody annoying comes up to you and they're like talking to you and you're like, okay. Yeah, okay. Like I wasn't mean. I at least talked to them. That, that's just being nice. Kindness is outward focus. Kindness is how can I be generous? How can I be compassionate? How can I be considerate? Considerate means I consider other people. I'm thinking about other people. What's going to help them? What's going to hurt them? If I say this or do this, how will this make them feel? That's a good question to ask yourself. If somebody said this to me, how would I feel? Oh, yeah, that would hurt my feelings. So I'm not going to say it to them. But it's true and they're annoying. Sometimes you are too. Kindness considers other people. And so here's my question. Is this you? Are you patient? Are you kind? Do you make room for people's flaws? Do you actually consider the feelings, the, 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 what other people, what would benefit other people, or are you only thinking about yourself? Here's the next one. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud. Love is not jealous. This is a tough one. Because when you see somebody else getting something you wanted, You get mad, you start saying stuff about them, you get that little attitude where like you talk to them but there's this little like edge on your voice when you talk to them because you don't like them because they got what you got and they did what you did and they and somebody allowed them to do something that you wanted to do. They got invited somewhere that you wanted to be, they showed up in somebody else's pose and you were like, oh snap, they went with them but they didn't invite me. Okay, that's how it is, uh-huh, and then this happened and then, okay, fine, well, whatever. You know what happens when you get jealous? You get bitter. And when you get bitter, 
it starts, stops, it starts being hard for people to want to be around you. God tells us to celebrate with those who are celebrating. Somebody may get what you wanted, and you may have to fix your heart and go, man, that's great. I'm so happy for you. And you have to fix your heart because here's the deal. Your ability to celebrate someone else will create the ability for God to give you a moment of your own celebration. And if you can't celebrate someone else, God goes, then I can't honor you with your own. Jealousy. It, love is not jealous. Love is not boastful or proud. Why? Because love isn't all about me. The requirement to be boastful or proud is to either think you're better than somebody else and you say it or think it or you think they're not as good as you and you say it or think it. You ever been around somebody who was boastful and you're like, shut up. Oh, my. For, uh, okay. Like nobody say, don't say anything. Because if you say anything, Captain 1-Up over here is going to tell how they're better. Okay? Just don't say anything. Hey, I got a B plus on my paper. Well, I got an A plus. Shut up. Nobody asked you. Just, just be happy I got a B plus because I struggle on this subject. Okay? It's not boastful and it's not proud because it's not about me. Then it says... In verse 5, and it's not rude. It's not rude. Have you ever seen someone get an attitude with a server at a restaurant? You ever seen somebody and, and, and they just, they get an attitude with somebody because they accidentally cut in front. They didn't know the line was there. And they stepped there. And, Excuse me. You're like, whoa, I'm sorry. Get in the back of the line. You're like, whoa, I didn't even realize that this was a line. I apologize. My wife and I say this all the time. I say, how do you treat another human like that? How do you treat another human that way? My, my wife tells this to our kids all the time, and I, sh I should probably say it to them also because it's a really good thing to say. She says this, does Jesus love them? Yes. Then why would you treat somebody Jesus loves that way? It's a good question. It's a good question. Before you say something about somebody or get an attitude with somebody or say something or do something, does Jesus love this person? Then why would I, does Jesus love my parents? Then why would I talk to my parents like this? Does Jesus love my annoying little sibling? Then why would I talk to my siblings? Do you understand what I'm saying? You're, like, you're gone too far, Pastor Josh. You're gone too far. <laughs> it's not rude. It does not demand its own way. Are you demanding? Now, before you say no, think about it. Are you demanding? If you don't get your way, how do you respond? Do you throw a 16-year-old version of a 2-year-old tantrum? How, how, how do you respond when you don't get, you know when, when, when we see it, the leaders see it the most, is uh, when we go to conference. Hey, where are we going to eat? Uh, we're probably going to go to In-N-Out. No, I'm not In-N-Out. Oh. <laughs> we went there last time. Oh. <laughs> Look, it's the best place for everybody. Go, no, I, I, I. It's like, sorry. That's where we got it. It's, like, it's best because it's late and it's, it's open. And we <laughs> Do you demand... Your own way. Now, you may not get your way, but if you don't get it, oh, you're going let to let everybody know that you are not happy. Yeah, everybody's going to know. Or are you willing to go, okay, I can humble myself. I, 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 can, I, can, I can submit. I can see what's best for everybody else. I can, I can surrender my will to God's will. I can just love people. It says it's not irritable. It's not irritable. What's that mean? When you just constantly got a bad attitude and somebody says something to you and you, you're sarcastic all the time. And you're, when somebody comes up to you, you know when I'm the most irritable? When I'm hungry and when I'm self. <laughs> it's 
excuse me. <laughs> when I'm hungry and when I'm focused on myself. Right, I'll be looking at something on my phone. I'm like engrossed doing something. My kids are coming talking about like, what? And I get irritated. Why? Because I'm self-focused in this moment. It's all about me. I didn't get what I want. I, I have what I want. Love is not irritable. And as we're talking through these things, my goal is that as you would read it, you wouldn't just be like, man, I'm horrible. But that you would go, okay. I want to be someone who is loving, and so God, help me in these areas. God, show me the areas that I need to work on. Here's the next one. Uh, it keeps no record of being wronged. This is huge. When we do something to people, and we make a mistake, and, and, and our parents get mad at us for something, or our friends get mad at something, and we're like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If they bring it up again, we're like, oh, man, come on, that was a long time ago. And then somebody does it to us, we're like, remember that last time, and the last time, and the last time. You're like, I got this whole list of like stuff everybody was doing wrong with me. You're on my list. You're on my list. You're on my list. Christians don't have lists. We don't have lists. We don't have things that people have done that have wronged us. Love keeps no record of wrong. Watch this in, in Psalm 130. It says this, oh, Lord, if you kept a record of our sins, who could survive? Verse 4. But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you, to be in awe of him, to love him, to reverence him. He says, if you kept record of everything I did wrong, nobody would survive. If God is not keeping record of what you do wrong, I cannot keep record of what anybody else does wrong to me. Love doesn't keep record of wrong. Here's the last one. Verse 6. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Now, what I want to focus on here is uh, what, what, what is a dichotomy of ideas, right? So you have injustice and you have the opposite, which is truth. You have something wrong happening and something right. We don't rejoice in the thing that is wrong. We rejoice in the thing that is right. Have you ever noticed how nice it feels to be in the middle of drama. Some of you are like, no, it doesn't. Oh, yeah, it does. When you're the one who knows the stuff and you're the one who's hearing the stuff. You know, the Bible actually says that a rumor is like a tasty morsel. You know what? It's like a snack. It's like, mm, tell me more. Mm, pigs in a blanket. Mm, like, like that, that's what a rumor is like. It's like, oh, my goodness, that jello from the, from the, from the buffet. Mm, uh, I like jello. Anyway, rumors, drama, it, it, it just it brings us in. And we will rejoice. Oh, I heard so-and-so's mad at so-and-so. I heard so-and-so did something to so-and-so. For real, what happened? I don't know, but I think that, oh, for, oh, my goodness. And then you go tell somebody else, and then they tell somebody else. And then, and it was like in the middle, and then, and then they have to come back to you to find out more information. than you. Well, let me go talk to them about it and see what really happened. Well, I heard, and you go talk to them. Well, where did you hear that from? Well, I don't know. So-and-so told me. And, and we're in the middle of it. And we feel important because we're in the know. We feel important because we're a part of the drama because drama must mean that something is happening that's important and everybody's going to want to know about it and I get to be in it. But the word of God says it doesn't rejoice in injustice and in, in the wrong that's being done to this person and the rumors that are being spread and the, in the, in the, the argument that is being created. Uh, let, me, let me tell you this. The Bible actually says that God hates now, you have to understand that God can, God can have two emotions at the same time. He can love and hate at the same time. The Bible actually says that God hates people who cause strife between other people. He loves them, but it actually says he hates people who cause strife. People who like to cause a problem between somebody else. Ooh, I just want to cause a little problem. I love, ooh, I just say this. Ooh, I can just do that. And they like to create it because there's something that is off on the inside of them that they can't be at peace so they have to cause a problem and I want to say this this will be a place where we will fight to keep it drama free and I'm going to tell you why 
It's not just for the sake of being drama free. The word of God says that where there is chaos, there is demonic presence. The Bible says that where there is unity, the presence of God can fall. So if we can be unified, if we can forgive, if we can shut down drama, if we can shut down rumors, then we can be a place where the presence of God can fall. But if we are going to be a people that likes to sit in drama, then it actually says the demonic comes in. And when the demonic comes in, things like anxiety and depression and fear and anger and bitterness, all these other things come in too. And that is not the house that we will have. So I'm giving you the authority and the responsibility as, as, as adult leaders and as teenagers to stop drama, to stop rumors, to say, no, 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 we're not going to do that. I know, I, I, heard, I heard that too, but I don't want to talk about that. I heard that too, but I'm not going to spread that. You know what, let's just talk about something else. I want to give you the authority and the responsibility to make this a place where we love what is right. Amen? Here's a question. Why do we struggle to love? One is because of fear. The fear is this. If I, look, if I don't look after me, who's going to look after me? If I don't love me, who's going to love me? But imagine if we have a youth ministry. Imagine if we have a church that our focus and our custom, our culture is to love each other. I'm not wondering who is going to love me. They are. Because that's what we do. I can love other people. I can be vulnerable. I can help others. I can give myself, my time, my energy to other people. Why? Because I know other people will do the same for me. Because that's what we do. Another reason is because of selfishness. We think it's our rights. Well, I have a right to be mad. I have a right to hold a grudge. I have a right to be bitter. I have a right. No, you don't. If you're going to be a follower of Jesus, you gave up your rights to him, and now your right is to be like Jesus. Another reason is maybe you don't know how to love people. Maybe at home you don't see it exemplified. You don't see these things happening. Maybe you see the exact opposite at home. And like, I don't understand how to be this way. Then I would say this, come deeper into this culture. Use the word of God. Use what we read here today and begin to study it and read it over and over again so that when you do something that is what the Bible says not to do, oh man, I'm being jealous right now. Oh snap, I just, I just stepped into this drama. Oh snap, I, I am I am being uh, selfish. I am being boastful. I am being, I am not being kind. You can bring it back and say, Holy Spirit, help me to do what is loving. Another reason is because uh, everybody sins. And our natural inclination is to be selfish. If you don't believe me, try to take something from a one-year-old. They're like, uh, no. That's mine and so is yours. Like, like, like our natural inclination is to be selfish. It's because of sin. And here's the last reason. It's because of, because of trauma. You may have gone through something where somebody hurt you. And because somebody hurt you, you don't have the uh, ability to be vulnerable. Somebody, somebody betrayed you, somebody hurt you, somebody took something from you, somebody did something that you have a wound. And so it is hard for you to love other people because you're afraid and you're hurt. So here's what I want to do. I want to take a moment and I want to give you a, a second just to kind of sit with the Holy Spirit just for just two minutes. We're going to sit with the Holy Spirit and we're going to ask him. Am I... Do I exemplify? Do I practice love? And if not, God, why not? Am I afraid? Am I, do I have a trauma? Is it just regular old sin? I just want what I want. So just take a moment now and just, just ask him. And whatever he says, I want you to ask him to forgive you. Ask him to help you follow him, to know him. 
to love 